Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're looking at how the Radeon RX 5700 XT and the GeForce RTX 2070 Super compare head to head in a 37 game benchmark. Now, before we get into the results, I would like to just address a few things that I anticipate some of you may take issue with. Firstly, yes, I am aware that the 2070 Super is a more expensive product. It has a $500 US MSRP, while the 5700 XT comes in at $400 US, and that makes it 20% cheaper. I'm also aware that Nvidia has a $400 option in the 2060 Super. So this comparison could have been made between either the 2070 Super or 2060 Super, but I really had to pick one. A 37 game benchmark is intense enough without adding more GPUs to the mix. Therefore, I asked the Patreon members what they wanted to see, and almost 80% of the votes were in favor of the 2070 Super. Hence why I ended up going that way. Of course, I won't ignore the price difference when it comes to form my conclusions, so please keep that in mind as we work through the results. As for the graphics cards used, representing the red team we have the PowerColor RX 5700 XT Red Devil, which retails for $440 US. And for the green team we have the MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio, which retails for exactly $100 more at $540 US. Then for the drivers I used GeForce Game Ready 436.02, and for the AMD GPUs the Adrenaline 2019 Edition 19.8.1 driver. The standard GPU test rig has also been used and it comprises of an Intel Core i9-9900K clocked at 5GHz with 16GB of DDR4-3400 memory, all installed inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. Finally, all testing takes place at 1440p and 4K. Now let's first check out the results for about a dozen of the games tested and then we'll jump to the 37 game breakdown graphs. Let's start with Forza Horizon 4 because only about a week ago the 5700 XT was matching or rather just edging out the RTX 2080 Ti in this title. However, the latest driver update bought massive performance gains in Forza and Apex Legends for GeForce graphics cards and in this example we're looking at an almost 30% performance uplift. Obviously that's massive and it's enough to see the 2070 Super edge out the 5700 XT at 1440p and provide a nice 7% gain at 4K. This result really is a game changer for Nvidia, no pun intended, but it really will help the 2070 Super pull ahead of the 5700 XT overall. Nvidia also managed some small gains in World War Z, but we're only talking about a few FPS here. Performance at 1440p is pretty much neck and neck, though we do see the 5700 XT run into some 1% low issues at the 4K resolution, and this is a shame given the average frame rate was quite impressive at 97 FPS. Here we see that the 5700 XT remains ahead in our Battlefield 5 benchmark, though again it is the 1% low performance that's a bit questionable, particularly at the 4K resolution. Still, when you consider that AMD is charging $100 less, the results don't look half bad. As I mentioned earlier, the other game where Nvidia has made a good step forward is Apex Legends, and here the 2070 Super is now 10% faster at 1440p. Probably not quite enough to justify the price difference, but it is clearly faster in this title now. For whatever reason, there's always a small group of people who rage in the comment section if I don't include Counter-Strike Potato Offensive, so in an effort to try and keep everyone happy, it's been included. Anyway, apparently 300 FPS on average is a good number for this title, so you'll achieve that at 1440p with either graphics card, using the maximum in-game quality settings, which isn't what competitive gamers use, so with competitive settings expect, mm, I don't know, 1000 FPS or whatever your CPU can handle. Moving on, frame rates in F1 2019 are extremely competitive. Basically, you're looking at identical performance using either GPU. The 5700 XT was a whisker faster at 4K, but really overall, you're looking at a very similar gaming experience. Another heavily requested old banger is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Though admittedly this is a quality game and it is still very demanding. Here we see the 2070 Super provided 11% more frames on average at 1440p, though we do see identical 1% low performance. Wolfenstein Youngblood plays best on the 2070 Super, though at 1440p with maximum quality settings we're still seeing over 120fps at all times with the 5700 XT, so how much that extra 10% performance matters is really up to you. 
Mad keen Fortnite players will want to use a GeForce GPU. Here the 2070 Super was 17% faster than average at 1440p, and that's almost enough to justify the 25% increase in price. Well, sort of. Still, a strong showing here for Nvidia, and like I said, if you're after maximum performance in this title, you will want a GeForce GPU. Though if you are using low quality competitive settings, I guess when discussing $400 plus GPUs, it probably doesn't matter too much. Moving on, we see Nvidia has also slightly improved performance in Strange Brigade, and now the 2070 Super is a good bit faster than the 5700 XT, offering 12% more performance at 1440p, and a 23% stronger 1% low result. Third last game we're going to look at is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and here the 2070 Super was 10% faster at 1440p, and 9% faster at the 4K resolution. With competitive settings, both will maintain well over 100 FPS at all times. Project Cars 2 has always favoured GeForce GPUs quite heavily, but even so, the 2070 Super is just 10% faster at 1440p, which, given the difference in price, really isn't a significant margin. It was also just 6% faster when comparing 1% low data, and we see that the performance is also very competitive at the 4K resolution. Finally, we have World of Tanks, and here the 2070 Super was 7% faster on average at 1440p. Both GPUs averaged over 130 FPS, and I, again, suspect with competitive settings, both will drive over 144 FPS at all times. Okay, so as expected, the GeForce RTX 2070 Super looked to be the more powerful GPU in the majority of the games that we just looked at, but quite often it seemed as though it was only faster by around a 10% margin, and given that it costs 25% more, that's probably not going to be enough to justify the extra investment. But before we make a cost analysis, let's just check out how they stacked up across all 37 games tested. Actually, before we dive into the new results, here's a look back at our day one results for a quick refresher. There's no Apex Legends testing here, but we did include Forza Horizon 4, and as you can see, this was a massive win for AMD. However, at the time, I noted removing Forza from the result would see the 5700 XT trail by a 4% margin. Today, we're effectively removing that result, as the 2070 Super is now faster in that title, so let's look at the updated numbers. So, from 2% slower in the day one dozen game sample, we now find that the 5700 XT is 6% slower at 1440p with 37 games. Not exactly an earth shattering change. As I noted, removing the win in Forza should see the 5700 XT trail by a 4% margin in our day one review, and now with 26 games added, you can add another 2% to that deficit. What's interesting to note is that while the 5700 XT is 20% cheaper than the 2070 Super, it was never 20% slower, at least at 1440p. Sure, it was 19% slower in Warhammer Vermintide 2, but we see just a 16% margin in War Thunder, 15% in Fortnite, and obviously it's reduced as we go on. Of course, overall it was just 6% slower, and that makes the 5700 XT very good in terms of value. The margin does widen a little at 4K. Here the 5700 XT was 9% slower on average, and up to 24% slower in War Thunder, and 22% slower in Metro Exodus. So for those of you gaming at the 4K resolution, I could see a reason to purchase the 2070 Super, but in terms of value, the 5700 XT is technically better, and we'll look at that now. Here we have the cost per frame data, and we'll be looking at the power color Red Devil model of the 5700 XT, and that came out at a cost of $4 per frame at 1440p, and that made it 14% cheaper than the MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio. Again, for those of you gaming at the 4K resolution, the 2070 Super does fare a bit better here, but still, the 5700 XT was 9% cheaper per frame. So that is a reasonable discount, so you'll have to weigh up what's more important here, outright performance or value. Okay, so if you have $400 to spend on a graphics card, it seems pretty clear, at least to me, that the Radeon RX 5700 XT is the best option. And based on the data that we have here, I estimate that it's around 10% faster than the RTX 2060 Super, at least on average. So that makes it about 10% better in terms of cost per frame. Now, if you weight your buying decision more towards the value aspect of the card, then the 5700 XT is also a better buy than the RTX 2070 Super. As we just saw, it's around 14% cheaper per frame. So yeah, from a value perspective, the 5700 XT is the better choice. However, this does depend on the games you play. In terms of value, they're very similar for titles such as Vermintide 2, War Thunder, and Fortnite. 
you just get next tier performance with the 2070 Super in those titles. That said, for the vast majority of the 37 games tested, the 5700 XT does offer more value, and in the particular titles just mentioned, the 5700 XT was still very punchy at 1440p, averaging 81 FPS in Vermintide 2 with the maximum quality settings, 86 FPS in War Thunder, and 104 FPS in Fortnite. I think it's fair to say the 5700 XT eliminates the RTX 2060 Super, and it almost does the same to the 2070 Super. But the fact that the 2070 Super was faster by a noteworthy margin in about a dozen of the games tested means it's a worthwhile option for those seeking extra performance. Of course, if you play titles such as Battlefield 5, CSGO, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Far Cry New Dawn, For Honor, Just Cause 4, World War Z, Dirt Rally 2, F1 2019, Warframe, and about a dozen other titles that we tested, then the 2070 Super is dead and makes no sense. Personally though, I'm going with the RX 5700 XT as the best option in the $400 to $600 price range. And really, unless you're spending over $700 on a 2080 Super, I think there's really no better option. But of course, I'm interested to hear from you guys on this one. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? And really, whichever way you go, I'm always interested in hearing your reasons. So yeah, drop them below in the comment section. And that's gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more, I suppose you can work it out. But if you would like to support us more directly, and well, I suppose not just support us, but get involved with the channel more directly, uh, chat with us on Discord, chat with us on our monthly live streams, and see behind the scenes stuff of our studios and whatever we're working on, then yeah, jump over to the Patreon link in the video description. You can sign up for as little as $1 US per month. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.